the touchline here on Y254. Robert Osoro is my name on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. And on this segment, we are going to be looking at Kenyan football. It's actually an eye on Kenyan football. We are still with Maxwell Wasike, my co-host here, and also joining us here for the first time is former Gormaya player Mike Otieno. Mike, welcome to Y254, the touchline. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it has been a big week when it comes to the sports industry in this Kenya and the world. What has been your biggest highlight of the week when it comes to sports? Uh, it was, a, I don't know if we can call it a low light or a highlight, but yes. uh, Poster Rangers <laughs> uh, overwhelmed Gormaya yes. uh, yeah. when they were 10 men. <laughs> Yes. And they lost their 11th man at the, in the third minute. I think Postal Rangers just wanted to show Sami Pamzo Molo <laughs> that you did a mistake <laughs> really? teaching us for Gormaya yes. and you need to make a return. But it was a good result for Stanley Okumbi, former mm -hmm. Rambe Stars tactician. I think recording his first win mm -hmm. since taking charge. Yeah. So Mike played for Gormaya back in the 90s. He joined Gormaya in the late 1995 and they played with the likes of Zedekar Ziko Otieno, the current KCB coach, he played with uh, Dr. Dan Shikanda, who is now the current FC Leopards chairman. But those are my words. Let's listen to his story, a bit of his heydays when he played for Gormaya. Mike, it is your time. How was Gormaya for you back when you played for Kogal? Uh, when uh, I, I started uh, following Gormaya around 1987, when yes. the uh, Mandela Cup, during the Mandela Cup, when uh, just beside that, it was the team that led on to Harambe Stars. So, I've been following Gormaya for since I was a young boy, mm. and uh, that is what really attracted me. So, since 1987, I really, really wanted to be with the you know like the likes of Peter Dow, David Ochieng. They really did well for Gormaya and also the national team. Um, so as a young boy, I, I started then, uh, I, I wanted to join Gore Junior, yes. which I did uh, at a young age of about uh, 15. Yeah. And then I got close to the team and uh, eventually uh, after uh, going to school in Musingu High School, yes. I came back and then uh, joined the senior, senior ranks. Okay. Uh, when I was part of the team, uh, we, Gormaya was going through a little bit of a cycle. Uh, a low cycle uh, because sometimes uh, we would not get the allowances. Yes. But uh, the fan following was always there mm -hmm. and everybody was really uh, engaged and wanted the team to do well. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it was one of those cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, along with people like Dan Ogada, I remember when we were uh, waiting for the bus here in uh, Gill House. Yes. And we would share the challenges that everyone was going through. Maybe uh, he had not paid. Uh, mm -hmm some of his obligations at home but he would still show up and represent the club yes so with that type of history players always engaged and uh even if there's some challenges the players always show up mm -hmm. uh and uh keep keeping the tradition yeah um i i recall we were uh, i was part of the young group that was joining the club uh, myself uh brian okumu we were just barely joining the club and then leslie okudo yes. came in and infused some professionalism in the club mm -hmm. which is also part of the broader mm -hmm. challenge that we have uh, with kenyan football because yes. we lack that professional uh infusion mm -hmm. um which requires planning requires a significant amount of investment yes uh we also uh did not have uh the previous team had uh, sponsorship from uh a casino, one of the casinos here uh, in Nairobi, yeah. but we didn't have an actual sponsorship during that time. So yeah. uh, significant challenges would travel uh, to Muhoroni to mm -hmm. play the matches there, yeah. and we wouldn't have a proper kit for uh, uh, proper doctor's kit, a medical kit. Yes. But, uh, you know, those are part of the challenges with Kenyan football. And it, it must be sad for you considering that those challenges you went through back then are still going on 30 years later. It is because uh, when you when you look at how uh, the uh, Americans developed their football since 1996, yeah. uh, they didn't have an actual f football program, but since 96 they featured in the World Cup. Yes, they've been uh, annually uh, featuring for the representing their continent, which is uh, Concacaf, I believe. Yes. So when you look at that, we have a tradition that goes through the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. but yet they started their program only uh, 30 years ago. Yeah, and I think. In the, when you look at the FIFA ranking, we're only at uh, one of four. Yeah. 
mm. and they are much higher position. Mm. So those type of things, I think something like infusing the professionalism, those, those challenges for the players, mm. we, we have to clean that up so that yeah. we can improve our football. So you played for Goldman for a span of four years? About Both two years. Two years. Two years. Then I left and uh, uh, I went to university in California. And just like you indicated, and like today, in the past there was no concrete sponsorship, there was no broadcast deal. Do you think those factors, absence of the two, contributed to you know some players not realizing their dreams? Because you see, currently we have a broadcast deal. When you're playing, your game is getting showcased, televised on TV. So someone interested in securing your services overseas in case you show extreme talent can get to notice you unlike in the past do you think those two hindered you know some of you people realizing your dreams of featuring for overseas clubs for your favorite outfits abroad you're absolutely right because um that type of uh the showcase is what you, you need you need that that publicity place, that platform where you can you can showcase your talent but if that plas platform is not there as in terms of broadcasting, you don't have any tapes that you can actually compile. Because to become a professional, you yeah. need a profile. Yes. You need a, a portfolio, a, portfolio yeah. a compilation of what you have done to give somebody a five-minute view mm -hmm. of your talent. Yeah. But if uh, uh, before we didn't have that uh, uh, intricate bro broadcasting uh, or, or video recording, video capture, and so those definitely influence or make it difficult for people to showcase their talent. Yeah. And um, what in Europe or in North America, what they really look at, they, they wouldn't know you personally and you can't tell them your story from, by words. Yes. So they would want to see exactly what you have done. Yeah. And uh, something like that would definitely hinder us. We also, uh, since then, we haven't come up with a long-range plan. Yes. We, we seem to be going over the two years, three years mm -hmm. at a time. Mm -hmm. So we need, we need something that is long range. Yeah. We can have a 50 year plan or a 25 year plan or a 10 year plan. Um, in the US, like the MLS, they started um, with a, a goal of losing $22 million. That is about, uh, how much is that in Kenya shillings? They are, w when they were losing $22 million, yeah. they felt that they were ahead of schedule. So we have to plan, we have to sacrifice and, and make, make the investments ahead of time so that we can um, uh, be able to capitalize on those opportunities. So, what, what made you, you leave Kenya for university in the States and what did you study for? Um, before I left, uh, I was featuring for the uh, first 11 team in, at Gormaya. Yeah. And then I got injured. I got a meniscus uh, injury. Yeah. So I got invited to a university called C uh, California State University. Yes. And uh, they, have a, they had a soccer program there. Yeah. And they also uh, wanted to encourage young, young people from Kenya yes. to get an opportunity to get that higher education. Because at the time, only four universities here in Kenya were offering those opportunities yeah so when you leave high school if you're not in those four universities you're not you basically had to get an a or a b plus or something like that uh, so i decided to you know go there and uh, and study information systems uh, I, today uh, my my profession is a systems administrator uh, for university oh, here in kenya uh, in the united in states the united states yes Oh, that's a big one. But now, when you look at football in the States and what you are doing in Kenya, we are really behind. Uh, we, we have raw talent, yeah. but in terms of how we organize and how we invest, yeah. we, are defini we definitely have some catching up to do. Yeah. Um, we lack something, one area we lack is strength training. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the poster players uh, the other day and you can mm -hmm. see when you compare in terms of size, one, that's one of the things you have to look at when you're looking at two teams, mm -hmm. the size or the, the muscle build of the players. Yes. So we lack strength training because we don't, uh, we don't have the gym, gyms that we can send our players and they can lift. And that is a very, very core and intricate, important part yes. of, of football. Yeah. Definitely. Of course, abroad, the way of uh, and style of management and administration of sports is different from how uh, you know, the local administrators do their thing at home. Mm -hmm. I know uh, exposure is key, is very paramount to you know, success development of these sporting entities. 
and having gotten that exposure overseas in United States where things are done differently contrary to how they are done here, do you think your professional acumen has been of much help locally? Is there anyone who's reached you <laughs> to seek your knowledge on how to uh, you know, administer the game successfully? I've, I've, I've had some conversations with, uh, uh, with some former players, like uh, Fred Arrocho. I've, I've had some conversations with him on how we can improve. I've had some conversations with uh, Zedekio Cheno Zico. Um, and one of the most important things that I, 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 I try to uh, emphasize is, is that, that, that long-range planning. And sometimes we have challenges because our t some of our teams don't have the sponsorships. Um, a team like KCB, uh, that one, you, they definitely can make some planning, they can pay the players and yes. make sure they have a five-year plan or a smaller plan. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So um, I've, I've tried to emphasize that long-range planning. We have to invest in our, our, our youth. We have to start looking for talent in, uh, in, in, in Western province, in those areas where there's... Uh, the, the physical talent is, is there. Yes. There's some very successful players from uh, Kakamega area, from Kisumu, from the Nyanza area. So we have to start looking at the younger players. Uh, in, in the United States, they have uh, programs for kids even for two years old. So they start very early. Yeah. Uh, my daughter, I'm going to start at about five years old, but they start at, at two and three. Yes. So we have to invest in the youth and, and start very early in providing uh, technical acumen. Yeah. For us, we, we got in contact with the better coaches when we were at high school or now you're actually playing in the league. So something very simple like uh, placement of a power. That is a very small comparison. We, we were taught always use power. Bigger Kombora. <laughs> Ua. Ua. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you have to have a balance of both. There has to be some placement in w when when you're looking at hitting the target is more important than you know just more power. Yeah. So there are some things that we need to teach the young ones early, so that we don't go to the national team level and then we start teaching our players how to control the ball yeah. or how to stop the ball. That is too late. Well, it is the touchline here on Y254. We're having a discussion with Michael Tieno, who played for Goldmeyer, but now is doing his professional work at the United States. But now, when we come on, talk about Kenyan football at the moment, what is your take on Kenyan football? Um, our, our continental uh, showing is uh, we are at a little bit of a low cycle right now because we see exits by teams in the in the first round and that is becoming almost perennially yes exactly so that is an indicator that uh, we we need to do something different um, our neighbors uh, just here Uganda Uganda uh, wasn't always ahead of Kenya when we looked at the rankings yes. but right now they are 83rd 83rd 83 is close to what Kenya did what was our best, which is about seven. And they were also in the finals of under 20. And they were in the finals of under 20. That's, a, that's amazing. Now, that, that is in the next 10 years, those young players are going to, to, to give us challenges. Yeah. So um, we have to do something different. Our neighbors are uh, somehow they're getting it right. Simba is getting players from Kenya. So that tells me that the incentives that we're providing our players is not enough yeah so we need we need we need the fans to come back to the stadiums mm. our fans we we watch the arsenal games and <laughs> <laughs> nicolas musonye former sekava secretary general kept complaining how you know people stuck in the bus along nairobi west langata you know catching arsenal against west bromwich albion mm -hmm. yet kenya playing against south mm -hmm. sudan to nyaya national stadium people can't show up and spectate the game but you see you talked about critical element of uh, talent nurturing. You know, we've had people running for positions, uh, seeking to be, you know, chairman, federation president, or various sporting disciplines local. And whatever they say that, you know, their agenda will revolve around nurturing of talent. It's been like, you know, a cliche mm -hmm. until some of us don't want to listen to that crap. How well can we actualize the dream of, you know, these uh, budding stars, especially at this secondary school level? Because when you watch this, school games you see how these young people exhibit high level of you know competence and uh, talent manifestation but i don't know they 
get to disappear in between and we never get an opportunity to watch them at the big stage, like for them featuring at the national level. How well do you think we can actualize the dream of these emerging stars? And, and that is true. When you, when you look at uh, Nairobi secondary schools uh, championships, yes. when you actually watch the games, they're engaging yes. and you see that there's a variety of talent from all areas of the country. Yeah. What, what we need to do is to ensure that there's, there's a handoff. There's, there are players, if you don't get picked directly from school, usually you don't get that opportunity. I was fortunate, I played for Kakamega Posta while I was still in school and then I uh, went on to play club football. But there's a transition period that is very easy to lose these young players. Mm -hmm. if, if you're not getting any opportunity at a, at a club yes. and uh, somebody offers you a job mm -hmm. and you want to start your family, you're a young man, you might, you'll, take the, you'll take the job. Yes. yes. You'll take the job. So, so we, there is a transition period where we need to ensure that these young players transition successfully and they get placed into, into, into clubs. The federation can, can take a very uh, active role in this. Yeah. And also the private sector needs to take a, an active role in this because these young players, when they are, I think when we have the secondary school championships, yeah. um, do they, do we allow, we allow, we still allow, we allow sponsorships? Can we, do we allow uh, any branding or for the high school games? Yeah, for yes, we school, do, yeah, they, we they do, do because yeah. even the likes of milk, you know, companies broke sides mm -hmm. are always coming on board. Mm -hmm. What we don't allow is, you know, these players getting paid because they are still at the tender age. So mm -hmm. money uh, incentives are not allowed. But, you know, for the corporates, mm -hmm. they are allowed to come on board. I think the corporate uh, can also take an active hand in this. When I was playing, we had uh, the Coca-Cola Coca -Cola championships, mm -hmm. and that helped us a lot in making sure we had something to do when we were around that mm -hmm. age of 18 years old. Yeah. So even uh, the even uh, the 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 corporate uh, sponsors mm -hmm. can take on these teams and say, mm -hmm. you know, we are going to put these these young guys together, mm -hmm. and so that they can represent our country in the under, under 18 level, under yes. 20 level, like Uganda just did. Yeah. And that way, you keep you keep that uh, that process going as they transition to the, but, to the but senior level. But when it comes to corporates, uh, I think in Kenya there's some kind of disconnect uh, between the corporate world and the sports uh, world here in Kenya, in that the corporates back then, they used to trust the sporting world. Today, they don't do that. How, how can we bring that trust back? Well, that's the keep one there, trust. Um, we, we have to infuse a level of professionalism from the football side yeah. so that we can demonstrate to the corporate, the corporate uh, um, entities yes. that we take this very seriously. If we show them that we take this very seriously and we uh, want to be uh, partners and stakeholders in something that can allow them also to, to reach uh, the section of uh, uh, sports fans, then um, they would probably take an interest in, in what we are doing. Uh, we have to uh, create transparency, transparency and accountability uh, uh, levels. We have to um, open up and ensure that the corporate sponsors can review our books. So that means we have to uh, hire professional accountants. We just don't decide that since I'm the chairman or I'm the, <laughs> I can also do the book. So let, let everyone, let's, let's, treat it as a, something that is professional all around. Yeah. And if we do that, I think uh, they will take an interest in, and, uh, and come back. Now, let's uh, finish with your uh, former club, Goldmeyer. What, what do you make of the team so far? Most uh, of the current team. I think the team has uh, some, some, some bright uh, young players. Uh, Clifton Miheso is uh, quite yes. engaging to watch. Mm -hmm. um, I know Muguna in the middle, uh, in the midfield there is, mm -hmm. is a standout. Yes. And um, I think that the, the, defend, the defenders are, all, all four defenders are pretty strong and fast. Yeah. Uh, so the team, but the team uh, needs forwards. Yeah. Uh, they also need to uh, recalibrate and, and, and mix up the, 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 the talent pool that they have. Yeah. Infuse some other young players into the team. Yeah and also uh, 
add some strikes, strikers up front. In the game that I watched on Wednesday, yeah. uh, I think they, they missed about seven clear chances. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, so, you know, in football, one chance can, can be the difference. Yeah. So the team needs, uh, needs uh, some, some attacking players. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we need some patience. Yeah. If you've been on, on top for about four years, mm -hmm. Uh, this, there's going to be a cycle or, or a break in between. Yeah. No team can sustain uh, top level for an unknown amount of time. Yeah. So there is going to be some, there is some, right now is time for patience. Yeah. Right now it's a time to rebuild yes. and uh, recalibrate. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you can make another run in the next uh, three or four years. And rebuilding is not only in the field of play, it has got to be on the other, all the aspects of the club. Mm -hmm. And one is the brand gourmet itself, the brand gourmet, a club that was formed way back in 64 mm -hmm. up to today. And you compare it to a club like Inter Miami that just started recently and is already on a profit run mechanism. What can you advise Gormaya that they can learn from such kind of brands like Inter Miami? Um, I think uh, the, the team, since the day uh, I was playing, I think yeah. the, the team has not uh, a completely embraced a professional approach. Right yes. now, Gormaya should have its own stadium. Yes. Gormaya should have a living quarters for all the players and all the coaches for anyone who needs a place to live. Yeah. Right now, Gormaya should have its own businesses mm -hmm. that, are, uh, that are creating income for the club. Yes. Right now, Gormaya should have professionalized the merchandise part of the uh, merchandise, merchandising. Merchandising, yeah. Uh, right now, Gormaya should have its own contracts yeah. with, uh, with corporations yeah. that can infuse some, uh, some sponsorships. Mm -hmm. Right now, Gormaya should have its own investment and the Nairobi Stock Exchange that in, in car income for the club. Yes. So it's definitely a far cry from where the club should be. If the club can invest in those areas, mm -hmm. save money uh, on uh, how you're raising talent, what kind of talent you're bringing in from, from outside the country. And um, uh, there's, there's a variety of things that can be done to definitely improve the club stature. Wow. That is where we come to the end of this segment here. They are taking me on a commercial break, but Mike, we say thank you for coming here for the touch and hope that you'll be coming again sometime in the future before you leave for the United States. Absolutely. Just before you leave, uh, Mike, <laughs> to leave, to exit, you know, the, the set, you can al tell Brian Kimani just to excuse us for the next five minutes. Yes. You do public demand, Brian. Mike, you know, uh, we have football administrators. You haven't given your thoughts on what you think about Football Kenya Federation leadership so far. And even, you know, calls to have Ambrose Rachir leaving the helm because he's been, he's, he's, some people believe he has overstayed. I don't know, what's your objective insight on the same? I, I, I think Rachir has had an excellent run for the club. And he has uh, definitely elevated uh, the club's stature when we look at the last uh, five, ten years or so. Yeah. So um, when, 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 when it, there is such a thing as fatigue and there is such a thing as infusing other, bringing new ideas for where the club is. The club is not where it was ten years, today, mm -hmm. ten years ago. So if uh, it, it may be time for somebody else to step up, but the person has to step up knowing, yes. like you had mentioned, that he even spends his own money. Yes. So it's not a, it's not a comfortable position. It's mm -hmm. definitely a tough thing. He's done an excellent job, but uh, I think uh, there's always room to transition to different kind of leadership, to bring new ideas, and that way the, the club can go to the next level. As a former footballer, do you think the current... A regime of football Kenya Federation has not utilized uh, ex uh, soccer players because that has always been the complaint from them. I think I think the uh, utilizing former players is is crucial. They are yeah. the ones who understand the game. We know they are the ones who know the history from the 80s and the 90s. We know what challenges are facing football players. So definitely adding former players like Musa Otieno into the core decision making because he's one of Kenya's, Kenya's most capped uh, captain, right? Yes. So he has a lot of experience of how 
you deal with uh, matches all around Africa. So you should definitely be somewhere close or providing uh, good advice to the, uh, to the officials. So the, we, the final one, Kenya playing against South Sudan this afternoon. Your take on Jacob Gostim Lace run so far and what you think about the capabilities of, the abilities of the team qualifying to the AFCON for the second time running? The, the two teams that we, the two matches that we have left, um, South Sudan, I think we should be able to get at least a point in that game. We would, I think because after all, it's a friendly, right? <laughs> but we deserve a point from that. If we don't get a point from that, we'll be in trouble, right? Yeah. Uh, then we play Egypt and Togo. Then we play Egypt and Togo. We we are ranked higher than Togo, hmm. so we are expected to win. That remains to be seen. But I think uh, if we, we we should collect about four points from the remaining two games, Egypt we should be able to collect a point from them as well. Definitely. That's Looking right. forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, Mike, for Thank your you insights so much for here on Y254, the Thank touchline. So Let's go for a short commercial break. When we come back, it will be the fun zone.